I bet we could hunt our whole life and never have that happen again. If I were a betting man, I would go out on a limb and say we could hunt 10,000 more sunrises and never see the same thing again. God knows we didn't plan it that way. It just happened. It'll forever be a frozen moment in time we'll remember till the day we die. But the video captured will live forever. Hopefully. They say there's some things you don't see every day. I say there's some things you may never even see in a lifetime. This is where time and place and a ton of luck all merge together like it was meant to be. In fact, this is one story I'm thankful there's video to prove it. Otherwise, I don't even think most would believe it. story's gonna have to wait, but trust me when I say you don't want to miss what happens. You see him? Where'd he go? This stand shows exactly why your setup is so important on every single stand. It don't matter if you call up 10 coyotes at a time if you can't see them to get them killed. We got lucky on this one getting one out of two, but we knew we screwed up the moment the first one just seems to vanish right in front of us. If you can't see them, you can't kill them. There he is.
The story goes like this. A wise man once said, one must see coyote before one can kill coyote. The end. And that, my friends, concludes this week's lesson in coyote killing common sense. Unfortunately, we weren't so lucky with this one. Hey! Hey! Oh, my bad. I want you to pay real close attention to the sound we're using here. It's called the sound of silence, and it works wonders if you know when to use it. We're going to talk a little more about it later to show you why and how, believe it or not, it could be the most effective killing tool on your Fox Pro. That mute button is there for a reason, and likely kills us as many or more coyotes as patience itself. One thing we've never really talked about on Night Crew is shot placement, and depending on what caliber and type of round you prefer to shoot, opinions may vary from hunter to hunter on where's the best place to shoot a coyote. Now, some guys would argue anywhere you could hit one. Well, that guy's probably not going to care about what I'm fixing to say. But if you're like me and prefer to anchor them in place and not have spinners or runners, you may want to listen up. It's our belief, based on hitting literally thousands of coyotes with the same projectile, to always aim forward directly into the shoulder of a broadside coyote and not behind it like you would a deer. Never behind it if you can avoid it. You'll understand why once you hit enough of them. If you're shooting lighter weight ballistic tip ammo that's designed to fragment on impact, you never want that projectile to do a complete pass through and hit the ground behind him. When that happens, all the bullet's energy goes into the ground and not the coyote where you need it to go. Complete pass throughs usually and often lead to running coyotes, or in some cases like what you're about to see, possibly not even recovering them at all. You want that fragmenting round to translate all of its energy into the body cavity of the coyote. And when it does its job like it's meant to, it'll usually anchor them in place with no exit and no fur damage. That's when you know the bullet did its job. That's why we never shoot heavy bullets at coyotes or cats, because we don't like the bullet passing through and we hate having to track them. You ready? Ready? You can either take that advice to heart for what it's worth, or you can prepare for a lot of what you're fixing to see. Now, if you paid attention, you could see the dirt explode behind the coyote after the round passed through. Now, don't get me wrong, this was not a bad shot at all. But had it been a mere three inches or so to the left, that coyote would have likely never taken another step. We're talking a game of inches here, and the devil's in the details, so watch the dirt behind him. Had that round stayed in him, this tale would have a completely different ending. I went back later that day and looked for that coyote for a solid hour, and never found him. Always in the shoulder, and never behind it. If it don't kill him then, it'll dump him long enough to get another one in him. It was a quiet ride to the next spot, but both of us were eager to redeem ourselves. Ronnie and I have hunted enough together, we don't even need to talk to one another, because we already knew we were both thinking the same thing. And it wasn't about merry-go-rounds and roses. It was about putting our hands on the back feet of a coyote.
If you heard that excavator running on the background, that's because there was a guy clearing brush on the other side of the fence only a few hundred yards away. So we didn't think anyone would come from that direction, but we were wrong. This has got to be the luckiest coyote in Texas because this stupid fence saved his life. When I had him, Ronnie didn't. When Ronnie had him, I didn't. We went back and forth with this coyote for what seemed like forever, but in the end, he won. about enough to piss you off right there. That fence saved his life. Did you ever see him back there? Yeah, I seen him. When he stopped over there that first time, he was right behind a post to me and I could not see him in the camera. I think once you finally got to where you could see him, he was behind a post, I would have shot that T post at about two yards. <laughs> Bing! If he'd have just got on this side of the fence, we'd have, he'd have nailed his ass. That's the way it goes sometimes, I guess. Guys ask us why we mute the call when one shows up. The simple answer to that is we don't want him knowing where it's at. We want him looking for it. Watch this. He don't have a clue where it's at. What this does with coyotes is buys you time. At the pace he was going, had we left it running, he would have no doubt run it over and took off forcing us to shoot at him running. If you want to kill more coyotes, you should learn this trick. He didn't know where the call was at. What, did he get within four foot of it? Probably. But he was on the upwind side of it. He stood there, what, 10 or 12 seconds, 14? Long enough for you to spin around on the gave me Gave me enough time to spin around. This right here is the biggest reason we never use decoys for coyotes. Cats are different, but a coyote looking for a sound is often way more killable when you're patient. If you don't agree and decoys are just your thing, that's great. But I suggest bring a shotgun into all your stands to hit them right before they run over the call, because they're gonna. That's just never been our thing, because all of us, including myself, are rifle guys. We've learned over time, if you want to hunt them with a rifle, you want to keep them looking. As long as they're looking, the odds are in your favor. That buys you time and takes the advantage of knowing where it's at away from the coyote. And in this game, stacking the odds in your favor is a must. So any advantage I can get to beat him, I'm going to take it.
sucker right there starting to fire up good. Two up and two down, both anchored in place in complete silence while looking for the sound they came to. I see guys on TV or the internet shooting at running coyotes over and over when all they had to do to prevent it was hit the mute button. When you try to stop them and they just don't because they're trying to run over the call and you decide to send that first round, you just better hope it connected somewhere because what comes next usually ain't pretty. It's a very simple process. When a coyote shows up, put your finger on the mute button. When they stop to relocate the sound and they're in range, shoot them where they stand. If they're too far and you need to get them to move, bump the call for just a half second just to move them where you can kill them. I've only told you part of this story so far, but what I haven't told you is about three weeks ago, we called up this same cat at night from a different direction only a few hundred yards away. Unfortunately, he got downwind and smelled us and took off. So on this morning after a long night's hunt, we went here specifically targeting that same cat. We were already up from hunting all night that night, so we just stayed up and figured we'd try to get close to where he came from the first time, hoping he'd just come take a look. We got there and got in position a little early before the sun came up enough to film. And while we're sitting there waiting, Ronnie looks over and says, Hey, 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 what's that? When I looked over to my left, all I could see in the twilight of the sunrise was a dark silhouette or outline of an animal going directly into the thicket we were about to call. So at this point, we're like, at least we know there's one in there. We could see it just enough to see a tail and tell by the way it moved, it was a coyote. So the story goes we were there looking for a specific cat, and a coyote goes into the same little thicket five minutes before we hit the call. We figured the odds were good one of the two would at least come check us out. We just never expected them to nearly get in a fight once they both showed up at the same time only 10 feet apart. And the whole time we were on this cat, the coyote is just sitting back there on his butt watching the whole thing. And that was a mistake. Baby, what are the freaking odds of that? Did you get them both from the same thing? Yes. Boom. <laughs> uh. you push record. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh. That cow didn't want nothing to do with that bobcat, did, you did see he? Him when they yeah. Were off? I got that on video. <laughs> I guarantee you that's that same cat. This is the very first time I've ever got a cat and a coyote in the same frame. I always figured something like this would eventually happen, and it finally did. And all I can say is, wow. That goes to show you, if it came down to it pound for pound, them cats would whip a coyote. Yeah, evidently. The coyote didn't want no part of it. Hell, he had to outweigh him by 25 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I bet we could hunt our whole life and never have that happen again. Oh, I know it. I mean, we've been going at this for a lot of years now, and I've never. We've called up coyotes and cats on the same stand, but I've never had them come in together like that. And interact. And interact, have a showdown. We'll forever remember this stand between a bobcat and a coyote as the showdown at sunrise. This proves beyond doubt that truth is indeed often stranger than fiction, because we couldn't have scripted that in a million years. Yeah, baby. For a second there, I thought we was going to have a throw down at sunrise. <laughs> that was really neat, though. I don't know if we're I ever see that again. Well, I guess one way of looking at it is they came in together. They can go out together. And they leaving together. <laughs>
If you play this game long enough, special things, unique things like this are bound to happen when you least expect it. And that is the fuel to our fire. That's why we do this. Yes, sir. When we hunt the night before till the sun comes up, it ain't always time to go to bed. Odds are they're probably moving if we're still up, so going to sleep just don't make no sense. I mean, what kind of normal person quits when the getting's good? That's like turning down free pizza or Taco Bell or something. I mean, who's gonna do that? <laughs>